The U.S. begins the search for those behind Tuesday's deadly attacks and gets a strong show of support from its closest allies. Article 5 of the Charter says that an attack from aboard, abroad by any uh, one against any member of the alliance is an attack against the alliance. And in New York, the still smoldering ruins yield stories of horror and also survival. From CNN Center, I'm Jonathan Mann. And I'm Relita Vasilova. We will have new details on the investigation of the terrorist attacks in New York City and Washington in just a moment. But first, let's go right to the scene of the worst devastation, New York, where CNN's Alessio Vinci joins us live. Alessio. Well, Rolitsa, there are many things, many incredible things that have happened here in the last two days in New York. One of them right behind me here, if you can see, even in the middle of the night, you can see the, the um, high cloud of uh, white smoke still uh, billowing on top of the wreckage of the uh, two uh, towers that were that collapsed after the uh, passenger jets uh, hit them. More than 40 hours later, still thick white smoke billowing from there an indication how difficult it is still down there for the hundreds of rescue workers trying to remove some of the debris and try to see if perhaps somebody is still alive um, underneath that rubble. The workers there working on 12-hour shifts, perhaps some of them even longer. The buildings surrounding the uh, World Trade Center very much unstable and making that rescue operation even more uh, dangerous. We spent several hours uh, earlier today with some of the workers there. Uh, we could see several uh, long lines of uh, dumpster trucks being used to uh, remove, to take away from the area the uh, debris. We also saw some re refrigerator trucks, an indication that some of the bodies were being found and taken to the morgue. The last official count at this time is 82 bodies found. Only 16 of them have been identified. The number of uh, casualties, of course, is set to increase once the rescue operation continues. Mayor of uh, New York, Rudolph Giuliani, has asked the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency to bring 6,000 body bags here in New York. Meanwhile, the lower part of New York, south of uh, 14th Street, remains completely sealed off by the police. Uh, a good portion of the uh, lower Manhattan is also without electricity. That's why many people have been evacuated, especially the elderly ones. Uh, some people also left on their own and I've been able to speak to some people earlier today, some people here in Lower Manhattan who said that even in the wake of this catastrophe, they wanted to remain here. One person saying, looking at the sky, uh, looking at the sky saying, I cannot believe that he, uh, the two towers are no longer there. Back to you, Alisa. Alessia, also from the reports we were hearing, uh, it's also difficult to breathe. Absolutely, Ralisa. We uh, spent there only 20 minutes down there, about a half an hour perhaps, and then and, and, uh, after that we could really, uh, we were ha really having a, a, hard, a hard time, difficulties in, in breathing. There is, a, there is smoke, there is dust, um, there is um, uh, a, a lot of uh, debris throughout uh, the area where the two towers uh, collapsed. Um, any uh, kind of uh, emergency uh, official there or the rescue workers are all using gas masks um, in order to be able to sustain hours and hours of very hard work. As I said, some shifts lasting 12 hours or more without a gas mask, it would be practically impossible to remain so close to the fire, so close to the smoke uh, and try to bring some of the bodies um, out of there. Alessio, uh, is there still hope that uh, survivors may be found? Well, I spoke to some rescue workers uh, uh, earlier and they said that, uh, yes, they do have hope. Uh, certainly, uh, they haven't found any uh, al body alive for the last several hours. We heard earlier, a couple of hours ago on CNN, one of the uh, volunteer rescue rescuers who was saying that so far he has only found body parts and no, no body and certainly no, not, nobody alive. So there's still, there is still hope, but after more than 40 hours, uh, and given the fact that uh, two towers, 110 stories high, collapsed, uh, it's really unlikely that at this point uh, any person alive could be found. But the work is continue, and it is still a search and rescue operation. Alessia, thank you.
The FBI says it's pursuing some 2,000 leads in its investigation of the attacks on the symbols of America's financial and military might. It says as many as 50 people may have helped plan and execute the attacks that leveled the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center and damaged the Pentagon. Among that group, the FBI says it believes between 12 and 24 hijackers commandeered the four jets involved, and it says investigators have identified many of those it believes hijacked the planes. Attorney General John Ashcroft calls the probe into Tuesday's attacks the most intensive investigation and the most massive in American history. And as David Ensor reports, U.S. officials apparently have already made real progress. U.S. officials say on the passenger manifests of the hijacked planes used in the attacks, they found names associated with terrorist groups. Intelligence officials say the evidence still points to the al-Qaeda group, headed by Osama bin Laden. There had to be some brains behind this. Uh, we have some good, promising leads. They're obviously being followed. Publicly, the Bush administration is accusing no one so far, while warning nations they too will pay for any help given to those who attacked New York and Washington. We will hold accountable those countries that provide support, that give uh, host nation, if you can call it that, support and facilities to these uh, kinds of terrorist groups. Afghanistan's Taliban government has long offered haven to bin Laden, but U.S. officials say they have no evidence thus far of any state directly assisting the attacks in New York and Washington. Many analysts argue that such a coordinated broadside could not have been possible without it. Osama bin Laden represents a complete terrorist network. He will have one or more state sponsors. Uh, countries that he's either based in or working in collusion with. They'll have been passport support, communication support. One thing I think that ought to make us a bit suspicious about whether bin Laden was involved in it alone or not is that he goes to great lengths to advertise himself. And when you see something like that, you begin to wonder whether or not there may be an effort to draw our attention solely to him to the neglect of someone who may be his principal contractor. If there was state support, a number of terrorism experts point to Iraq as the most likely suspect. A statement from President Saddam Hussein on Iraqi television said, quote, the United States reaps the thorns that its rulers have sown in the world. U.S. officials say they are developing good law enforcement and intelligence leads. They do not know yet who was behind these attacks, nor whether any state assisted them. But they believe they soon will. David Ensor, CNN, Washington. The U.S. military says it's assuming a defensive posture along both coasts of the United States to protect its borders. For more on that, we go live now to the Pentagon and CNN's Mark Potter. Mark? Well, John, uh, activity is uh, still uh, afoot here at the Pentagon. It's quiet at this hour, but uh, the building is still very operational. Lots of things going on. And we're told that it will be fully operational later today. Uh, all uh, available personnel are expected to report to work despite the damage to the building, which we are seeing a live uh, picture of right now. Uh, in this area, destroyed by the airplane attack, workers continue to sift through the rubble and to try to shore up the structure so they can uh, go deeper into the building. Uh, they're looking for victims, and they uh, say they don't expect to find any survivors. Uh, the anticipated death toll here is in the area of 200, including those who died in the plane. Now, we have a graphic that we would like to show you, if we could, uh, showing the area hit by the plane and affected by the very intense fire. Uh, fully half of the entire uh, Pentagon complex, as we can see here, is shut down now, and the corridors leading to those areas are, are, are blocked by armed guards. Uh, ironically, the area hit by the plane had just been renovated. Now, officials say it could take months, if not years, uh, to repair the damage to the building. Uh, thousands of people here uh, have been displaced, uh, including the, uh, the chiefs of the Navy and the Army. They will all have to work out of uh, temporary offices now. In a recorded message to, the, uh, to uh, U.S. troops, uh, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld once again hinted at um upcoming military retaliations. It is my duty as head of this department to tell you that more much more will be asked of you in the weeks and months ahead. This is especially true of those who are in the field. We face powerful and terrible enemies, enemies we intend to vanquish, so that moments of horror, like yesterday, will be stopped. 
Now here at the Pentagon, FBI agents also are on scene, uh, sifting through the rubble, looking for evidence that would support a criminal case. Uh, officials are also looking for the black boxes from the plane, the, the voice and the cockpit recorders. And uh, they believe that there, is there could be information on those boxes if they are found that could provide uh, information, important information on exactly how uh, this, uh, this uh, attack was planned and perhaps could answer the question of whether the hijackers actually intended uh, to attack the White House before turning the plane toward the Pentagon. That's a report, uh, a suggestion coming out of uh, the White House, uh, which says it has credible information to that effect. Again, those black boxes have not yet been found. Back to you. Mark, there are warships now up and down both coasts of the United States, west and east. It's an impressive display of gunboat diplomacy or something. Is it symbolic or do they really expect still some kind of attack to come by sea? Well, U.S. military officials say that those ships uh, along the east and west coast are there in a defensive posture. Uh, particularly when talking about the East Coast. Uh, they say the ships there are to protect uh, particularly the areas of New York City and Washington, uh, D.C., against further uh, airborne attacks. Uh, there are uh, two carriers and uh, support ships, five support ships on the East Coast, one carrier and 14 uh, warships on the West Coast and, and in the area of Hawaii. Uh, it is a symbolic uh, gesture uh, on the one hand, but it does have an important uh, defensive uh, 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 position, uh, 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 and it does, it does represent uh, a concern on the part of the U.S. military. Let me ask you about something else that we just heard from the Secretary of Defense who described the U.S. facing what he called a powerful and terrible enemy. When the Secretary of Defense of a nation as powerful as this one uses that kind of language, who's he talking about? He's talking about the terrorists, the international terrorists, people who are willing to die in the, in the furtherance of their goals, a very difficult enemy to fight. That's exactly what he's talking about, and uh, he's uh, bracing the troops for the possibility that they may have to go into action. Mark Potter at the Pentagon, thanks very much. Melita. Secretary of State Colin Powell says he's building a strong coalition of international support as the United States considers its response to the attacks. He also had words for Pakistan, which has a close relationship with Afghanistan, where suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden is thought to be hiding. We have not made a determination yet as to who is responsible for yesterday's attack. But we thought as we gather information and as we look at possible sources of uh, the attack, it would be useful to point out to the Pakistani leadership at every level that we are looking for and expecting their fullest cooperation and their help and support as we uh, conduct this investigation and as we generate more information. The United States ambassador to Pakistan is in Islamabad. Wendy Chamberlain is to meet with Pakistani President General Pervez Musharraf Thursday. Earlier, Mr. Musharraf made a national address in which he pledged to cooperate with Washington. Pakistan has been extending cooperation to international efforts to combat terrorism in the past and will continue to, to do so in the future. Countries must join hands in this common cause. I wish to assure President Bush once again and the United States government of our unstinted cooperation in the fight against terrorism. In Afghanistan, the fear of possible attacks by the United States and its allies has residents and international aid workers fleeing the country. The United Nations and International Red Cross have already pulled some personnel out. Our Nick Robertson is in Kabul, Afghanistan, and he joins us from there by video phone. Nick. Released a little while ago, three United Nations flights left the capital of Afghanistan, Kabul, for Pakistan. On board the last of the international United Nations staff here in Afghanistan. Before they left, they paid off all their employees and taken away key documents with them. Also today, representatives from the International Committee of the Department is fueling among the population in Kabul, parts of Afghanistan. What could be expected in this? They are concerned that Afghanistan could be targeted as some kind of revolution for the on the United States. The Taliban yesterday issued 
a dire request uh, uh, 